<laughs> What's up everybody? My name is Nickerson. Thanks for coming back to my channel for another 30 days of Halloween. <laughs> Had to do it today. We're talking about Midsummer. <laughs> We'd like to welcome you. Come join us. Join us for a prayer circle. Come join us in our cult. I was like, damn. I knew that movie was gonna be fucked up. Yeah, it was. I knew it from from <clears throat> the get. That movie, and um, I watched it at my brother's place in West Hollywood on this like seventy inch TV. And the sound, everything's awesome. And, uh, dude, that fucks with you, that movie. Yep. It's like a psychological thriller slash horror. I'd say it could be. It's like, it could be either. Um, oh, it was so, it was so good. It was so refreshing. It was this, you know, this friend group. And they're like, oh, we're going to some weird, you know, Swedish festival, like this religious festival, whatever. And then they're slowly starting to realize that this is some ancient fucked up cult tradition thing that they've been lured into and uh so it takes a, it's a while to build the mm -hmm. first the first kind of like shock value moment and even so it was it was definitely wrong but it was it, you, you were kind of like okay it's not that bad but you knew it was bad because you knew as soon as that happened where they jumped off the rocks and the yeah yeah and as soon as that happened i was just like oh because you know there's plenty more. Like, they did that just to give you a little pink taste of yeah. it. And then uh, that's just one of those movies where, like, it's just nonstop pummeling your, like, unsettling nerves. It's unsettling. It's disturbing. It just makes you go, oh, man, that would suck so bad. And uh, what would you think of it? Um, so I, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah. I knew movie. I knew something was... was going down when um their swedish friend i, I forget what the kid's name was but creep yeah i think yeah. it was i think, we'll it, was, <laughs> I think it was creep <laughs> we'll go creep so the um creep the, the female in the movie just going through some traumatic stuff and there's the friend who's just like oh i'm so glad you're coming with us and i'm like you motherfucker this, there's something going on here. Like this girl's there's traumatized, and you're not like you're not like. Oh, I'm so glad you you come with us. To, you know, boost your spirits. I'm like, oh yeah, my mumbo senses are tingling. Something, something's about to go down in Switzerland. <laughs> I bet something was tingling. Yeah. Okay, both senses were tingling. If we're being honest. <laughs> oh shit. But yeah, he definitely preyed on her because she was broken emotionally. She just had the two deaths in her family. I yeah. think it was her mom and her sister. Yeah. It wasn't really relevant. It was just the fact that she was going through that. And um, yeah, he goes, I'm especially glad you're coming. And it's like any girl would naturally be like, all right, this dude's creepy. But she's just like, fuck, dude. She just lost two really close family members. And she was just like reeled in, like straight up reeled in yeah you got reeled right in that's that's the type and that's the message i think of the movie is that that's the kind of people that join cults is like when they're emotionally they, they lose their family they lose things they lose you know like an important thing is to have people who love you in your life and if you don't you're you're so much less likely to succeed like you have higher anxiety depression all that yeah and uh so it's like when you lose those two, you're vulnerable. So if they mask this love for her. They're like, oh, and they celebrate her. They're like, oh, no, you don't need your boyfriend. Come with us. You're the queen. This is like some ceremony they do to indoctrinate this emotionally frazzled individual. Yeah. You know? And I, you know, what's, you know what's so cool about that movie? I thought the fact that they had inbred kids. That was disturbing <laughs> that hat is disturbing <laughs> this is fashionable it's fashion forward back this. me up here viewers <laughs> she's the may queen <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh shit that's funny well, i don't even remember what i was saying <laughs> just distracted by my my sexy hairdo here <laughs> It really was. But yeah, they, they, they brought her up. They, they indoctrinated her into the ceremony. They split them up. There's so many, like, it's one of those movies, like, as soon as, like, like I said, the first scene where they jump off the rocks, 
and then the next scene, next scene. Every time you're like, uh, get you, you're you are the viewer. You're like, get me out of this place. Yeah, you know what I mean. And, and it just keeps every when you turn this way, it's like whoa. When you turn this way, it's like whoa. And then it keeps getting oh, <laughs> woo, <laughs> progressively worse. And that's just was so awesome. That was just so awesome about that movie is that it, it just. Kept going. The snowball really built up. And by the end, you're like, holy shit. That was a trip. Yeah. Literally. I like how in the movie, <laughs> like, like you said a little bit, they slowly start to separate this this traumatized girl and her boyfriend. Like, yeah. one of the uh, females in the cult kind of takes a liking to him. So, like, you'll see, like, little hints in the movie. Like, oh, she's got a crush. And then they have this uh, weird-looking ancient scroll, and it shows somebody... Basically taking a a pie and putting their their pubes in it, and then they take a drink and they put like their period blood or something in that realm in there. And I'm just sitting there, having seen that, like everybody's they're making the pies for everybody, and I see the boyfriend's pie sitting on this little wooden pizza plate, and I'm like, that's probably a pube in there. Why is that thing separate? Something is wrong here. And then they're all at the table, and he's about to drink his drink, and his was a little pink. Everybody else was like a yellowish white, and I'm like, that's warning number two. What the fuck is going on here? Yeah. I thought that was cool how, like like I said, they're trying to split those two up. Yeah. And she had, when they're, when they're first in there, right, they're running around. It looks like a long, infinite loop of Ring Around the Rosie. Yeah. And she goes by him, and she gives him a little, like, love kick. In his, in his ass cheek yeah. and he turns really? and she's like yeah. kind of giving him like this like we're gonna fuck later right and he was just like you know you, that whole I can imagine just being there and experience like they're just like so they're so pulled out of their element they're just so much more vulnerable because it's like when you you know this is a society so you don't wanna you don't wanna speak up about certain things you don't wanna offend them you don't you know it's a different you they they realize this is something different yep so they hesitate to say things and then it gets worse and worse and then yeah by the you know by the end they you know some of them are fucked yeah <laughs> I'm not gonna say who but so like like you said you got the the whole like I don't want to offend your culture so they're kind of like they're preying on that so they're kind of like easing you into it. But they also, they you know, giving these people psychedelics, like, they're not hiding it. They're like, oh, this is, you know, we're going to put this in your drink. This is just to kind of relax you. And that's how they, that and the whole, like, I don't want to offend your culture, that is how it gets them to work in their, like, the work in the cult's favor. Cause they're like, like, All right, we, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, know. You're right. I was just going to inject that, like, that's exactly right. Is they were like, oh, like, you don't, you don't want to do it. And everyone's like, oh, why, why not? It's like that, that societal pressure, peer yep. pressure. There it Peer is. pressure, kids. Yep. Don't do drugs. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Overall, great movie. Yeah. You know what I loved about it? Was that it took place mostly during the day. Very few night shots. Only a couple, I think. Yeah. And uh, that was cool. You know, I, I always like it because, like, a lot of... You know, it's typical for, like, a horror movie or scary movie to be in the dark. It's just kind of like an easy... An easy extra scare tactic is because it's dark low visibility yeah so when it's in the summer like and not the summer obviously the summer <laughs> but during the daytime yeah, everything was like i don't know there was an element of like that it was kind of scarier because it was just regular like you know it wasn't this like oh it took place at night because killing is going down it's like no even during the day we sacrifice to our gods or whatever, and I was like, "Oh shit!" Like the, it's not even one like killer. It's just this whole community of like, "Come in, we're gonna absorb you." You know what I yeah. mean? That was the most disturbing, and you're just so far away from like anything else. It, you know, they're in a different country, and they don't even know that country. And uh, yeah, Midsummer was awesome. Overall, I loved it. It's it, a twenty-four. I mean, you know, we did the witch. We did Hereditary, and of course, we had to do Midsummer too. Yeah. Yeah. So, one part that I have to mention that I thought was just insane was, like I said, like, the boyfriend's getting hit on by this chick, and he's kind of, like, he's kind of feeling it. His girlfriend's separated. They have, like, a little bit of, like, you know, him and his girlfriend have, like, little fights here and there. E either side, you know, they're like, they're both kind of, like, arguing to the other person saying, you're wrong, or you're wrong, well, all right, maybe we can work on it. So there's, like, a little bit of a divide, and then the cult pushes them a little further apart. But the part I thought was messed up 
was now the girlfriend's got this you know sexy little headdress on and I'm just going to I'm going to leave it at that um she sees her boyfriend and some other people who I'm not going to mention who die and she's just like the, the dude had like just cheated on her so she's like already like she's got the heartache of like her family members die boyfriend just cheated on her, all this insanity she's on um psychedelics where she's dancing with these people so now she gets to a point where she's just broken she's looking right at him as he's dying and she's just like laughing like completely broken she's become one of them now and i was just like damn dude like i realized he cheated on you but i'm like she's gonna sit there and, and smile like i'm sure every like girl i'm sure every like angry girlfriend thinks that but nobody actually does that you know yeah. <laughs> a little late, but spoiler alert. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Do what you will with that information. <laughs> it's a good movie. Mid Midsummer had to be mentioned. because I mean, I did the other 824. Now, those two are, are obviously more geared towards just straight horror. Yep. But, uh, had to do this one too. You know, I give 824 so much credit. They're doing, they're doing what nobody's doing. They're being creative and shocking with new techniques of horror movies so you know i appreciate that i saw everything i've seen by them which is those three movies it was great yeah i gotta thank nickerson for this recommendation all three Ooh. actually Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> had to introduce him to a24 this is mumbo raz as you know thanks for coming out mumbo we'll have you back very soon i just yep. want to thank you all for watching don't forget to like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments what's your favorite horror movie, and what do you think of the A24 series? Let us know. Leave it in the comments. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Thanks again.